First of all, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, I'm very flattered to see so many of you here. I, I would like, to the extent possible, to treat this as a, as a conversation, and we will have a, an opportunity for exchange uh, 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 as, we, as we go along. But uh, I think if only to be visible from the back, it's, it's better that I stand up for, for the, this, uh, these launching remarks. Uh, well, Joyce has already, in, in fact, uh, said some of it. Uh, President von der Leyen has decided uh, in her political guidelines, which is the document that will actually mark the, the, the policy uh, of, of her whole five-year mandate, to put an emphasis on two parallel economic and social transformations. One of them is what has already been launched uh, last month, the European Green Deal, with a, a focus on... Uh, a, tr a transformation not only in the interest of the climate uh, uh, and of the environment, but also a transformation in the interest of the European economy and society because she takes the view uh, that it is only by, uh, as it were, seizing the challenge, preparing for it uh, and investing in it uh, and leading on it that in that area uh, of of clean technologies, uh, of transformation of our economic processes, uh, that we can continue to be prosperous and maintain our European social model. And she takes the same view in the area of digital. This is an area where Europe is, I think, perhaps sometimes excessively seen uh, as being behind. Uh, there are certainly areas where Europe uh, has lost position and, and is less strong. But it is ultimately an optimistic agenda because it is also a transformation which can leave us hopefully uh, more efficient uh, with more uh, egalitarian societies, contributing also to the, to the green transformation uh, and assuring uh, European prosperity uh, in the coming years building upon assets that we still have in spades in Europe if we deploy them well. Uh, she has identified a few of the areas, this of course won't exhaust the agenda uh, in this respect because of its digital reaches into so many uh, areas of, uh, of life. One of them is uh, that we must uh, ensure that we have technological sovereignty, Joyce already mentioned the term, uh, in respect of key technologies in the digital area. Now, th this is not technological sovereignty defined against anyone or anything. It is simply uh, the ambition for Europe to have some of the, the key factors of production of, of the future economy at its own disposal. Uh, of course, in some respects for our security, that we can call upon things like quantum computing and, and cryptography or, or, or cyber security competences uh, when they are needed. But in part, it is about ensuring uh, our general prosperity and, and, uh, and economic uh, capacity in, in Europe. Uh, so that will in part take the form of ensuring the key infrastructures of a digital economy are in place. Infrastructure is, and, and ensuring that the economy can, can use good infrastructure is, is a key uh, competence of any uh, sovereign uh, entity. And there we move beyond uh, broadband, both mobile and fixed, but into slightly uh, more uh, arcane things for the citizens, such as high-performance computing that will allow massive data processing by, by European researchers and, and businesses. We look at areas such as the capacity in Europe to, to process huge amounts of data, which will be necessary, for example, for many products and services to be powered by uh, artificial intelligence. And we have uh, massive opportunities uh, to, to harness data. Data goes well beyond the, the sensitive and, and already uh, well-worn debates on, on personal data. There are huge amounts of economic, uh, uh, industrial, environmental data being generated, and more and more all the time. So 
this is an area where whatever may have been uh, missed opportunities in the past, uh, there are still huge opportunities to be seized, ones in areas where, uh, in particular with industrial data, the, the manufacturing and industrial strength, the amount of investment that is going on in digital uh, by, in particular, larger European industrial players actually gives us some uh, ground for, for optimism uh, and a basis on which to build. We see in areas like artificial intelligence that while uh, the levels of investment in AI by, by businesses and, and public research in Europe are not yet anywhere at the level we would wish to see in, in comparison to some key world players, uh, if you look at one of the basic benchmarks of intellectual excellence, the number of peer-reviewed publications uh, in, in the AI field, then Europe is actually the, the intellectual powerhouse of this field. This is an asset which, of course, we must be able to, to seize. We must be able to make sure that AI uh, practical expertise is available uh, through our digital innovation policies to, to SMEs. Uh, and of course, we need a, as clear as possible a legal framework for this, this new uh, and powerful uh, general purpose uh, economic tool to be, to be used across our economy and society. It's one reason why President von der Leyen uh, committed within the first 100 days uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the mandate to bring forward policy proposals in the area of AI and data policy because, of course, the two go together. And I, I will not say that that keeps me awake at night, but it does keep me up late at night. I, I will <laughs> concede that much. One of the other areas that we see as, as really critical to make sure that the economic framework uh, for digital flourishing in Europe uh, is, is firm uh, is the area of digital services. It is often said that Europe is stronger on goods than on services. We have uh, a framework for digital services in the e-commerce directive that has given extremely good service over about 20 years. Um, but it is normal that in an economy where so much now passes uh, across digital uh, intermediaries of one sort or another, where some of them have acquired massive uh, market power or, let us say, uh, social or economic significance, that we look at the, the, the moving parts of that regime and, and see, in particular as regards issues of, of responsibility, uh, for what is happening uh, on, uh, on digital platforms, that we, we are still uh, well served by those uh, sound uh, basic rules. Um, another key aspect of assuring sovereignty is, of course, security. Uh, be it uh, on our 5G networks, where we have a very important cooperation ongoing now with national authorities to lay down framework conditions for the security uh, of those networks uh, with a so-called toolbox coming out uh, uh, hopefully within this month. But moving beyond that, uh, clearly the, the, the trust that people have in an increasingly digitized economy and society and life uh, will be conditioned upon the security of the products, be it the baby phone uh, in, in you know, keeping an eye on the kids while you're downstairs, uh, the famous connected fridge, uh, or the uh, massive amounts of industrial data which are the key to the, to the innovation power of, of our companies. Uh, Cyber security uh, is, in a way, the other side of the coin to the increasing digitization, the increasing connection uh, or, uh, of, of everything that is going on in our lives. This is an area where we need even stronger cooperation mechanisms between the cybersecurity authorities uh, of the member states and with the EU. It's why she speaks of a, a joint cyber unit that can react uh, more uh, more actively to, 
uh, to threats. Uh, it's also why it's important to have uh, a very vibrant cybersecurity uh, sector in terms of both research and, and delivery uh, in our uh, in our uh, in in our ecosystem. It's why it is important that we have strong norms in terms of certification of products uh, and a whole gamut of other things. What I have referred to is a relatively, uh, let's say, a whistle-stop tour of the many issues that need to be addressed. Uh, any transformation across an economy and society inevitably has a large number of, of moving parts. But I will, I will end with, with the, the message that I, I began with. It is a positive agenda. There is uh, an awful lot to be gained for Europe in this area. We have a lot of strengths. And the European added value here, above all else, is in convening and coordinating strengths that are present in, in many of our member states and ensuring that we have a common and coherent policy to exploit them to the full. Thanks very much, and I look forward to uh, the discussion.